Every day, millions of drivers rely on their tires without a second thought. They grip the road, handle tight corners, and keep passengers safe. But what if I told you tires don't just keep you safe, they're the best safety feature in your car. Statistically, modern day tires have helped cut road fatalities by over 80%. That's not an accident, that's engineering. But here's the strange part. Tires withstand extreme heat, rain, and snow, all while barely touching more ground than the size of a hand. So how is that possible? And what makes them so safe? To answer that, we need to look at where it all started. The first rudimentary tires weren't made of rubber. Instead, they were solid wood wheels with iron bands. The result was unforgiving. Every bump, every pothole felt like a violent shock to the passengers, making it dangerous, unstable, and sometimes even deadly. Early engineers tried to fix this by wrapping leather around wheels to soften the ride, but the leather wore down quickly and did little to improve grip. The obvious solution should have been rubber. After all, it was accessible and had natural traction. But there was a problem. In the summer months, the rubber would soften into a sticky mess, and in the winter, it became rock hard, cracking under even the slightest bit of pressure. A solution finally came in 1839, when Charles Goodyear accidentally discovered vulcanization, a process which chemically transformed rubber into a strong, temperature-resistant material. In the coming decades, engineers made major improvements to the tire. Except this time, it wasn't just for comfort, but safety too. But this raises a new question. How exactly do modern day tires keep us safe? To answer that, we first need to understand how they actually work. At first glance, a tire seems simple. But in reality, it's one of the most carefully engineered components of a vehicle. Its job isn't just to roll. It's to grip the road while keeping the car stable. And that all starts with the contact patch, a small, hand-sized area of the tire in contact with the ground at any given moment. This tiny patch is responsible for three critical functions. First, it moves the car forward. When you press the gas, the tire grips the road and pushes back against it, creating the force needed to move the car forward. Second, it slows the car down. When you hit the brakes, the tire resists the car's motion, using friction to bring it to a stop. Third, it helps the car turn from side to side. And all of this is thanks to friction. Without it, the car wouldn't be able to move an inch. But this brings up an interesting question. If friction is so important, wouldn't a bigger contact patch be better? Well, that's exactly what drag racers do. Their massive tires maximize surface area to put as much power onto the track as possible, giving them the grip they need for explosive acceleration. But for regular drivers, that much grip comes with a major downside. More contact with the road means the engine has to work harder, burning more fuel and reducing efficiency. And with car manufacturers constantly trying to squeeze out every last mile per gallon, extra wide tires just aren't practical. So unless you're lining up at a drag strip anytime soon, you won't be needing them. Unlike smooth racing wheels, everyday tires rely on carefully engineered treads. At first glance, these might seem randomly placed, but they actually serve a precise purpose. And it's one you may have never thought of. In rain, those deep treads act as drainage channels, forcing water away from the contact patch. Without them, water would build up underneath, lifting the tire off the road completely. This is called hydroplaning, and when it happens, it can be deadly. That's why tread design isn't just important, it's critical. But that raises a common question. If tread design is so crucial, why don't all tires follow the same one? Shouldn't there be one perfect pattern for every road? Not exactly. Different tires are built for different environments, and using the wrong one can be just as dangerous as a worn out tread. Summer tires are designed for heat. Their rubber is firmer, helping them hold their shape under extreme temperatures, while their shallow, wide treads maximize road contact for better grip. This makes them ideal for dry pavement, but the moment temperatures drop, they stiffen, losing traction. Winter tires solve that problem by doing the opposite. Their rubber stays soft in freezing temperatures, allowing them to maintain grip, while deeper grooves bite into snow for better control. But that same flexibility comes at a cost. In warm weather, winter tires wear down rapidly and feel less responsive, making them a poor choice year-round. This is why all season tires are so popular. They blend elements of both, offering a balance between summer stability and winter traction. They're not perfect for extreme conditions, but for most drivers, they're good enough to handle a bit of everything. But tread design doesn't just affect grip. It also plays a role in something most drivers never think about, 
how much noise their tires make on the road. More on that later. First, let's talk about something far more noticeable. Exploded tires. Decades ago, blowouts were a major highway hazard for all vehicles. If a tire failed at high speeds, the driver often lost control, leading to serious crashes. But today, passenger car blowouts are far less common, and this is due to legally mandated tire pressure monitoring systems, a system that alerts drivers when air pressure is too low, preventing most failures before they happen. But here's the problem. Most 18-wheelers don't have them. Unlike passenger cars, semi-trucks aren't required to have TPMS, and many still rely on manual pressure checks. If not done regularly, heat grows until eventually it fails. The good news is that's changing. With companies like Nira Dynamics AB developing tire pressure monitoring systems, drivers are now being alerted of underinflation long before a blowout happens. But keeping drivers safe isn't just about preventing blowouts. It's also about controlling what they hear, or don't. For most of automotive history, tire noise was just part of the driving experience. A constant hum, a rhythmic drone at highway speeds, something drivers simply accepted. But modern tires are noticeably quieter, and that's no accident. The change started decades ago, when engineers discovered that the repetitive patterns in early tire treads were a major culprit. Older tires had uniform tread blocks, each the same size, aligned in a rigid grid. This design meant that as the tire rolled, each tread block hit the pavement at the same intervals, creating a predictable, repeating vibration. The result? A loud, droning hum would pollute roads. To solve this, engineers introduced pitch sequencing, a technique that varies the size, shape, and spacing of tread blocks to break up these repetitive vibrations. By staggering block sizes into small, medium, and large variations and arranging them in a less predictable order, they spread the sound energy across multiple frequencies. This was just the beginning. Over time, manufacturers refined these designs even further, introducing asymmetrical grooves and foam-lined interiors to absorb vibrations. The result? A ride that's not only quieter, but also more comfortable. But noise reduction is just one piece of the puzzle. A tire's real test isn't just how quietly it rolls, but how well it grips the road. To simulate real-world wet driving, manufacturers use specialized test tracks that maintain precise water depths. Vehicles fitted with test tires are driven at varying speeds, angles, and braking intensities to measure how well they maintain control under slippery conditions. Braking grip is one of the most critical factors. On a dry road, a car might stop in just a few car lengths, but in the rain, that distance can double or even triple. Engineers analyze how well a tire maintains friction as the driver slams the brakes, ensuring stopping distances stay within safe limits. Cornering performance is another major focus. Test drivers push tires through tight curves at high speeds, assessing how well they stay planted or if they suddenly lose grip. But wet testing only reveals part of the story. To truly understand how a tire behaves under all conditions, engineers turn to force and movement testing. Mounted onto precision test rigs, tires are subjected to simulated road forces, tilting, rotating, and flexing as they roll over a controlled surface. This test measures cornering grip, braking efficiency, and rolling resistance, tracking even the tiniest deformations in the rubber with high-speed cameras and sensors. The data helps engineers fine-tune tread patterns, rubber compounds, and internal structures to maximize safety and comfort for passengers. Recently, though, something changed. Instead of just refining old ideas, the industry is looking at something entirely new. For decades, the tire industry has faced a fundamental problem growth. Cars need tires, but demand has remained relatively flat, with fewer people replacing them as frequently as before. Manufacturers have spent years competing on incremental improvements in a slow-moving industry, but then came electric vehicles, and suddenly, everything changed. Unlike traditional gas-powered cars, EVs burn through tires faster, with replacements needed twice as often. A typical internal combustion engine vehicle might get 40,000 plus miles out of a set, but EV tires often need replacing by 15,000 to 20,000 miles. The reason? Weight and power. EVs are hundreds of pounds heavier due to their massive battery packs, and their instant torque shreds rubber much faster, leading to a rare and lucrative growth opportunity in an industry that had been running on fumes. But EVs aren't just good for sales volume, they're driving innovation. 
More weight means higher rolling resistance, which drains battery range. So manufacturers are developing low resistance rubber compounds to make tires more efficient. This shift is happening fast. EVs aren't just changing how cars are powered. They're giving tire companies their biggest growth opportunity in decades. But what happens next? Some manufacturers believe the future isn't just better tires. It's tires that never go flat at all. Airless tires are one of the biggest breakthroughs in tire technology. Instead of being filled with pressurized air, these tires use a structured web of flexible supports to maintain shape and absorb impact. Without air, they can't go flat, can't blow out, and don't need refilling. Companies like Michelin and Bridgestone are already testing these designs on heavy-duty vehicles, and soon, they could become standard on passenger cars. Meanwhile, self-healing tires aim to solve another major problem, punctures. Researchers are developing rubber infused with polymer compounds that react to damage, sealing holes automatically. Some versions use liquid-based sealants, while others rely on advanced biomaterial reactions to close gaps in seconds. The result? Fewer roadside emergencies and longer-lasting tires. With airless and self-healing technology, the tires of the future won't just be tougher. They'll be smarter, more reliable, and virtually maintenance-free. The only question is, how long until we never have to think about flats again? Tires have come a long way from being one of the most dangerous parts of a vehicle to one of the most rigorously tested. With advancements in pressure monitoring, tread design, and durability testing, modern tires are engineered to keep drivers safe in ways most people never think about. But sometimes, safety isn't about adding more. It's about knowing why certain things are left out. Take school buses, for example. They're among the safest vehicles on the road, yet they lack something we expect in every car, seatbelts. So, how do they protect passengers without them? Click here to find out.